predators lurking online to brainwash kids into doing whatever they want. Way 31 Morning anchor Demetria Green researched that popular app Discord to find out why this is happening, also to find out who is most at risk and what can be done to stop it. Here's her report. I want to warn you, the details in this story are unsettling. Adults looking for notoriety online, forcing kids, who could be anyone's, to do the unthinkable from cutting themselves to beheading animals and even urging them to take their own life. I talked to tech and health professionals to get to the root of the problem. Parents need to be aware of this. Parents need to be ahead of this. The internet is not a safe place. The social media app Discord touted as a place to hang out, play and chat. But it's those conversations that are raising eyebrows. You truly don't know who you're talking to. People like the app because of its anonymity. If it's really easy to change, like, you know, your name on it based off of like what server you're on. The app is divided into chat rooms or servers based on your interests. From social club servers like the one UAH student Megan Haynes is in to update her friends on group meetings and projects to dark, sadistic ones preying on kids with mental health issues. The people targeting the adolescents are, are a big problem. Teenagers especially are got some pretty big vulnerabilities and one of them is that their emotional part of their brain is not developed yet. Leaving the door wide open for predators. Dr. Patrick Pate says these adults befriend kids, learn their secrets or get naughty photos to blackmail them into doing grotesque things for the amusement of themselves and others in the server. You're probably thinking the site would kick those bad members offline, but Dr. Pate says it's not that simple. There are things you can do to make it because it's uh, harder to track you because you don't have to include your real name. You don't have to give any personal information when you make a, a Discord account. And he says even though the company logs and tracks everything, they are not legally bound to share that information with law enforcement. So essentially, it's a predator playground. But there are some things you can do to prevent this from happening. Dr. Pate says use a tracking app. For privacy purposes, you can't see what your child is saying in their messages, but you can see what servers did they join, what communities did they join, who are they sending messages to, who did they add to their friends list. Download the Guardian's Guide on Discord to control which accounts can interact with your child. And lastly, talk to them. So making sure even as young as kindergarten, first, second, students who are, are maybe not yet connected but will eventually be connected to the internet, you know, kind of understand that, that bi-directional anonymity so they don't know who you are, you don't know who they are, and it, and it should stay that way. And that's Haynes' golden rule. Always kind of like assume the worst in some ways until like, you know, you're talking to them, whether it be like on like a direct video chat, like a FaceTime call, things like that. Now, there are reports of Discord removing hundreds of accounts due to abusive activity. Other countries have banned the app due to extremist content and child sexual abuse material. So it'll be interesting to see if the U.S. will follow suit. With coverage you can count on, Demetria Green, Way 31 News.